What's going on, guys? Welcome back. So we're going to be continuing our discussions about countering hostile surveillance. Could be a stalker. It could be some type of hostile surveillance. Now, I encourage you guys to watch the first two videos that we did on this subject. The information that we provided on those are not only integral to understanding this portion of the topic, but it's probably even more than I should have given. <laughs> it's some very detailed information that will absolutely save your life. Everybody loves watching videos about hand-to-hand -hand combat and seeing techniques, but these videos, these types of videos that we put out, although they don't get as many views, they're actually more practical and they will save your life. So with that being said, let's jump into it. And again, one more time, if you haven't watched our two previous videos about, I think they're entitled like counter stalking or something like that, countering hostiles or whatever, something like that, go and check them out. I'm going to label them part one, part two, part three for ease of watching. So in the last video, we discussed the importance of if you think that you are under surveillance, <laughs> You don't want to bug out and like try to lose them real quick. That's the very unprofessional way to do it. Um, and that's asking for them to say, okay, they'll fuck off for a little while. And next time when they come back, you won't know that they're there. Like you won't probably get the opportunity to make them twice if, if they're decent at what they do. So then what if you actually need to lose the tail? Like there are times when it is appropriate that you will actually want to go ahead and get rid of that tail. And the tail simply meaning who was ever following you. Because in the last video, just to recap, we discussed the importance of, okay, realizing you're under surveillance, calming yourself down because it's going to be a hair-raising experience to say the least and then gathering information on them going about your business but confirming number one that you are under surveillance and then gathering enough information on them and then reporting it in well what if you actually need to lose them now in the more clandestine service type of context here this could be that, well, you're going to go to a meeting and you can't have anybody see who you're meeting. So whilst you know you are under surveillance, you need to discreetly lose them. So you can go to that meeting and meet with your source or your whatever asset clandestinely. Now, to us, this doesn't really apply, right? Civilians, world travelers, whatever, chillers, <laughs> Um, it doesn't, it really doesn't apply as far as that context goes necessarily. It could. Or my bad habit. I mean, it, it could. Um, and I'm the one to judge, right? If you're going to go and you're going to meet some girl and whatever, right? <laughs> whatever. I'm not here to make any judgments. I'm here to offer you the information. So there is a right way and a wrong way to do this. The wrong way to do this would be, oh, I know I'm being followed. Let me speed up real fast, run through these red lights and go down the wrong way street. Da -da -da -da. Like you'll, you'll hear this, right? And you'll hear this from people who, who don't, maybe they, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. These people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Like they, they, they will tell you these things about, okay, well, if you go through a red light, whoever's following you, you know, probably won't go through that red light also. Um, which is not true. I, I'm going to tell you this right now. I, I worked surveillance as a private investigator for a little while and we do go, go through red lights. Our, our boss will pay the ticket for us. I mean, it's plain and simple. It's what we do. Uh, are we going to go through the red light with you? No. Um, but as soon as you clear that red light and you're kind of out of our line of sight, we're going to speed the fuck up <laughs> and also run that red light if we can and and get on you. Um, 
going down a one-way street, right? Going going the wrong way down a one-way street. You'll you'll hear this one too. Um, okay, a little bit better of an idea, but again, if your if your tail is good, <laughs> and they they kind of have their wits about them, they know the area, which they should. Um, they're going to figure out a way to like get around and, and find you, right? Or if, again, if they have a team with them, they'll report that into the team. They're going down one-way one, one way street, like the wrong way. Like, get on him. Oh, okay, we can get on him here up at James Street, whatever, right? So, again, like, I see where the, I see where the advice comes from, but it's, <laughs> it's not ultra practical. And another reason why these things are like, silly is because you don't really want to draw that attention to yourself that you know that you're being tailed again um please go back and watch that last video we did about the subject but there is a more discreet way to do this and you don't again you don't want to like be so obvious that like you you know they're following you because they will fuck off. Like that's the SOP. That's standard operating procedure is when you feel like you're burnt or you're about to be burnt, like you you leave. Operation is is over. Um, and there's different contexts to this, right? There's obviously some context where you're going to follow the person and you're going to be right on their tail and you don't really care if they know that you're following them or not. Like there's times and a place for something like that as well. And so that's when losing a tail would be, you know, you could be more aggressive with it. But nonetheless, it's still a better idea to be discreet about your actions. And I'll explain why. So what you're going to want to do um, initially is get a little bit of distance from the person. Um, now, you can do that. And you can try to do that nonchalantly by, there's many ways you can do it, but I'll just give one small example, right? You can speed up faster and faster until you gain a little distance, right? Um, essentially, what we want to do is break line of sight. And after we've broken line of sight, we take the evasive maneuver. So anytime that you can get outside of their immediate line of sight, for in other words, um, if we're going down a street, if we can speed up and take the turn real quick, and then we know that there's another road that we can turn and turn and get out of there and then speed the fuck up after we're out of their line of sight, that's how it's done. Anytime that you want to lose a tail, um, and again, if you can take these actions discreetly and make it look like you're not running away from them, way better. Okay, way, way better. Now, again, if you need to, like, and I, I've been involved with, <laughs> let's be honest, I've been involved with having to 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 lose um, people following me who are very aggressively following me. Like, I'm saying bumper to bumper type thing. It's hard, dude. Like, you're not, it, unless you have a faster car, <laughs> um, it's extremely difficult to lose them. And, and especially if they have any training, dude, it's going to be it's going to be near impossible, right? Um, so that's why losing them by breaking line of sight before we take any action is absolutely crucial and paramount. The way that we do that, the way that we gain enough distance that we can break that line of sight, well, that depends on context. That depends on your particular situation. And I can't necessarily tell you how to do that. I can tell you that it will take practice, but you can make it you. There are ways, especially if they're not right on your bumper, that you can make this discreet. But I just want you to think about. First, I have to break line of sight. In other words, make sure they can't see me. Then I have to be smart and slick enough and know the area well enough. That I can take an action and speed up and make all these crazy maneuvers after they can't see me anymore. So that to them, it appears, all right, he's made a left on this street. I'm going to pull up. I'm going to wait, you know, 10 seconds or whatever. So I'm well behind them. And then I'm going to pull up and 
get on them again. Wait, where did they go? Where did they go? Where did they go? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, they must have gone down this street. No, maybe they went down that street. There's like three streets here. Which one did they go down? Oh, fuck, I'm going to have to canvas the area now. Like That's that's what the guy is going to be thinking. Um, especially if it's more that type of, you know, he's he's tailing you kind of at a distance type of thing. Um, at that point, you, you speed the fuck up. You get out of there and you go on, right? You go on to your meeting or your whatever you want to do. Um, that's the way it's done. It's not done by... <laughs> Oh, well, if I go through this red light or, you know, if I go through the light just as it's turning red, they'll be stuck at that light the whole time. No, no, they won't be, dude. They're going to go through that light. They're going to do it safely, but they're going to go through that light and they're going to get back on you. Um, they're good. They, it's what they do, um, depending on the context of it. But, you know, generally they they will blow that light themselves or they will find a way around that that one-way street or maybe they'll even go down with you if they're that aggressive but if you break line of sight then you take your actions and again it's necessary it's very necessary that you know the area <clears throat> so if this is your area if this is your sandbox then great you should know it well and i would encourage you to when you have time drive around and just know those little side streets know where you can take your actions speed up get out of there and then once you have sped up and get out of there got out of there i would recommend um trying to get off the road at some point <laughs> so i hope this helps guys um we will get back to doing our hand-to-hand -hand combat videos on saturdays this kind of took precedence I, I see a lot of information out there about this stuff but i don't see a lot of information like this out there and this is the real mccoy this is how you do it this is how it's done and i was hesitant on putting it out there um, but there you go. There you go. I, I feel like at this point, it's necessary to share more of this type of, um, operationally useful stuff with you guys. So I want to encourage you to leave a thumbs up and comment on this video. It does help drive us up in the algorithms. We do monetize the channel. So anytime that you can help us in our efforts to <laughs> receive a little bit of something from YouTube would be appreciated. Go to our website and check out gutterfightingsecrets.com. If you like the hand-to-hand -hand stuff, we've got online training packages available for you there under the hand-to-hand -hand combat tab, direct download. I am very proud of the work that we put in there and I'm very happy and very honored to be able to sell you these products that will give you the tools that you need should it come to it to protect yourself against a violent threat should you find yourself unarmed. Which, if you're doing work like this, could be, could be a very realistic situation. Until next time, guys, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers, motherflowers. flowers.